Over a century, the idea of basic income came up over and over again. In the last decades, however, this idea has become the subject of a fast-expanding public discussion due to the growing social problems. Some see it as a crucial remedy for many social ills, including unemployment and poverty. Others denounce it as crazy, which should be forgotten as soon as possible and dumped once and for all into the dustbin of history. But let's have a look at some famous people who advocated basic income, even if it was not in this universal and unconditional form as it is discussed today. In the beginning of the Renaissance, the task of looking after the welfare of poor people was almost an exclusive right of the church and charitable individuals. Some of the so-called humanists started playing with the idea of a minimum income in the form of a public assistance. Thomas Moore, the author of the book Utopia, comes to one of the first adherents and argued for an income grant with the words No penalty on earth will stop people from stealing if it is their only way of getting food. It would be far more to the point to provide everyone with some means of livelihood. Thomas More's close friend, Joao-Louis Vives, supported the idea of a granted minimum income. He was the first to work out a detailed scheme and develop a comprehensive argument for it. He wrote, Even those who have dissipated their fortunes in dissolute living, through gaming, harlots, excessive luxury, gluttony and gambling, should be given food for no one should die of hunger. About 200 years later, Thomas Paine, one of the founding fathers of the United States, wrote the pamphlet Agrarian Justice, discussing the origins of property and introduced the concept of a guaranteed minimum income. Charles Fourier, one of the radical visionaries Marx labeled utopian socialists, argued for the idea. The class who took away estates owes the class of population which is disadvantaged, a minimum in a sufficient amount. Influenced by Charles Fourier, Joseph Chalier wrote, A guaranteed income could end the domination of capital over labor. Another admirer of the thoughts of Fourier, John Stuart Mill, described this idea with the words, In the distribution, a certain minimum is first assigned for the subsistence of every member of the community, whether capable, or not of labor. All of these intellectual concessions were made before the 20th century, but Bertrand Russell kept the discussion alive. Anarchism has the advantage as regards liberty, socialism as regards the inducement to work. Can we not find a method of combining these two advantages? It seems to me that we can. The English engineer Clifford Major Dumas proposed in a series of lectures and writing the introduction of a social credit mechanism. It failed to establish itself in the United Kingdom, but attracted many supporters in Canada. While the popularity of the social credit movement was first swelling and next shrinking in broad layers of the British population, the idea of a universal basic income was gaining ground in a small circle of intellectuals close to the British Labour Party. Prominent among them was the economist George Cole. Politically less attractive, but with a far wider international reputation than Cole, another Oxford economist, the Nobel laureate James Smith, defended the social dividend with even greater tenacity. In the 1960s, at the peak of the civic rights movement, a real debate on universal basic income resurfaced. Since that time, among the adherents on basic income were Robert Theobald, Milton Friedman, Martin Luther King, Eric Fromm, James Tobin, Robert Anton Wilson, 
Andre Gorks and others. Since the 1980s, after the foundation of Bien, the amount of supporters of basic income is growing significantly worldwide.